In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold a box and lid designed by Dave Brill. It's a fantastic design folded from a single sheet of paper and you can see it also has a nice duo effect if you use paper that has a different color on one side. This model was folded from a 15 cm square and the resulting side length of this box, this cube, is 3 cm. In inches that's about 6 inches to get a side length of about 1.2 inches. I advise you start with larger paper for your first try. In this video I'm going to be using a square with a side length of 25 centimeters, that's about 10 inches, and the resulting side length of the box will then be 5 centimeters or about 2 inches. So the rule of thumb is the resulting box length is one-fifth of the side length of the square you start with. So let's start folding. We're going to start with the color side up to get a box that has color on the outside and you can vary that of course. Now there's techniques to fold one-fifth on a square but I want to actually have a result where there are no creases um, that aren't necessary. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a plain ruler and measure one-fifth on the paper and then add a crease like that. Now I'd usually use a bone folder to just mark this rather than actually draw a line on, but that wouldn't be very visible on the video. Once you have those, you can then pinch them once here, once there. And now before we do that, I forgot, let's first mark a crease in the center. Unfold and then add that crease at one-fifth to flip this over and then use those two markings I made to add a crease at one-fifth. Unfold and now you only have to fold quarters on those four fifths. So bring the edge to the one fifth crease. Make a crease, unfold, and then crease to two fifth, which you just created. Unfold and then add the final fifth. And unfold. Now rotate and we want to add fifths on the other length too. So again I'm going to mark. Then pinch and crease. Then flip over and Again, fold quarters on the remaining four fifths. I'm actually making the creases in specific directions. It doesn't matter that much, but it does um, make it a tiny bit easier, I guess. So if you follow along with how I actually add the creases, they will have the right directions of mountain and valley. But if you don't, I probably advise you to um, make the creases in both directions, so valley and mountain, so that they're nice and strong and they at least have no direction. Then unfold completely. 
and we now want to add uh, a couple more creases. So fold back one fifth and then align that edge with the next fifth. And crease. Same thing on the other side. Then open up and fold to that fifth, creating a tenth. Same on the other side. And unfold again completely. Now we've created this crease pattern where you can see you, we've got a couple of mountain folds and the rest is valleys. Now turn the paper so that the central crease here lies horizontally and then you know that this is the top and this is the bottom. And we're now going to add creases to the top, diagonal ones, um, one here, some here and some right here. So let's do that. Fold the diagonal of a square with a side length of one fifth. And also add diagonals right here. Crease and crease the other diagonal. Unfold and then fold the other two diagonals here. So now we've got those three. These ones I actually want to be a bit stronger, so I'm going to also fold them in the mountain fold direction. In the bottom we also want that top uh, diagonal square. And then we want to add some diagonals right along here. For this, align the lower point with the point at one fifth by one fifth. And then crease, starting from the center, one square up. Unfold, repeat on the other side, align starting from the center, crease one square, diagonal up. Then rotate and repeat. Unfold and now let's rotate back so that the top is in the top. Next, we're going to make a slight pre-creasing right here. So we're going to add half a diagonal or a diagonal on these small squares which have one tenth by one tenth side length. So for this, bring that edge to two fifths and then crease just along that small area, not the first small one tenth square, but the second one. Unfold, repeat on the other side. I'm doing a lot of pre-creasing here because I think it's great to use this for a present and then you really want it to look very nice. Now we're going to rotate again. You can see we added this crease and now we want 
to add that other diagonal. So again, take the edge, bring it to two fifths, and this time crease that small square on the edge. Unfold and repeat on the other side. And unfold again. Now let's add one final set of creases. Right where you did these creases, we're going to add 1 20th right here. So we're going to flip over the paper to make a mountain fold. You can see here is the crease. This length is 2 fifths. Here there's 3 fifths. This is the top, this is the bottom. And then crease 1 20th only up to the, those creases we, we added last. So you can see I stopped creasing right here. Do the same on the other side. And now, I know it's hard to believe, but we've got the crease pattern done. I'm just going to add one last crease in the end, but let's not worry about that now. So first we're going to locate the top and the bottom. You can see the top has three of those uh, squares with diagonal creases, and the bottom only one. Then fold in one tenth. They're only mo already mountain folds, or you're going to make them into mountain folds now. And then we're going to fold up, so this is perpendicular, on each side, so that in the middle one-fifth remains. Then you can see that you have these diagonal creases, and we're going to make them pop up in a mountain fold, like that. You can see this. I'm going to maybe make a valley fold there too, so that you can see this happening. And then on the second one right here, you're going to fold it down to collapse like this. Hope that was kind of visible. So you get the start of a box. Now I did forget to do one more final pre-creasing that I usually do, so let's add that now. So you can see there's one tenth and then there's one fifth, and on that square we're going to add a diagonal crease. So let's do that now. Just like that. Same on the other side. Adding that diagonal. Okay, so now you have this collapsed and you can put one of these um, one tenths into the other one, just slip it inside. And now it will be quite helpful to just reinforce that these four layers of paper are all in line with the creases we prepared. So these are going to be valleys. You can see that I'm just really pressing on them through all layers to get that reinforced. And then you kind of get a shape like this. Now we're going to take this point and push it back so that it will lie like this, this triangle. Okay, so you can see this. This is going to be a mountain fold and we're going to push this inside to the back. So if you look inside um, you can't really see much <laughs> because it actually lies right along this layer, right there. So let's have that in place. 
And then we're going to push this layer so that it lies right on that one. So I usually support a bit with by putting my finger in there and then push down. And then push down and it starts looking a bit messy here, but don't worry. Just keep on pushing, 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 pushing and it will straighten out beautifully. There you go. Just going to reinforce these a bit. You can see the lid is almost complete. Now you have some creases here and this is going to be a mountain fold here and those are going to be valleys to make a lid complete. Okay. Same on the other side, have a mountain and a valley and it goes like that. Some directions of the creases aren't that important because uh, there's two layers and half of it will be the wrong direction in any case. So now once you've prepared that you can kind of have a look what it's going to look like. Keep those flat. So this would be the lid. Let's push that out a bit. But we're going to clean this up in any case now. Because these small triangles right here are going to go underneath that layer. So that it's nicely hidden and the paper has more space to actually lie nice and flat, right? So they're hidden now and you can see that there's a crease right here that's actually the central crease we added. And we're going to fold back along that. Gives the model a bit light again. And sometimes these layers aren't quite aligned, so I like pulling them apart a bit to get them aligned perfectly to get a nice finish in the end. So now we only need to complete this box here. Now we have to get these layers back up to, um, to form this small raised um, length that really makes the box stable, uh, close stably. So we're going to take just one layer of paper by going in here and pull it up. And we've got some diagonal creases added here. We're just going to go along those. That's number one. And look at it again. Just take one layer, pull it out and straighten it out and reinforce that crease. Now you've got these creases right here. They should be mountains and we're going to fold those out to the outside. Ensure that these two layers here stay together to get a nice finish. And then pinch that corner. Same on the other side. And pinch that corner. And in the beginning I promised we'd be adding one final crease, which I think Dave Brill doesn't suggest, but I'm going to do that anyway. So on the right side, we're going to take two layers and fold them down to the edge. This is going to make the final locking mechanism a bit easier to do, I think. And easier is better, right? So let's keep that. And now, as in the beginning, we're first going to make one mountain fold like that, kind of pushing this up in a mountain fold and pushing this to the back. And then folding the other one down. And you can see that here there is a triangle emerging and we just folded that small corner, this one. I'm going to pop that up and put it behind that triangle. Okay, 
Now, is this visible? Probably not. Let's try again. Can you see that here? The white triangle is underneath that small corner we folded. Now, the box is basically done, but this is still um, not fixed enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one layer and pull it up by pulling in the top. Okay, and then we're going to take that triangle that we just folded. Okay, let me quickly take this bone folder. You can see here you've got the triangle, you've got that small corner we folded over, and here there's some space. So we're going to take this layer so that this layer goes behind there. So we're going to pull this and then just put it over there. And that folded in corner makes it a lot easier to actually insert that. So now it's already a bit more fixed, but again, here's a tiny corner. And for that, we're just going to put this layer underneath right there, underneath this. This can be a tiny bit fiddly, but it's the final step, so that shouldn't be too bad. And then your box and lid from a single square of paper designed by Dave Brill is all done. I like to actually close up the box a bit and then reinforce those folds right there to make it um, really nice. So sometimes when I close the box I have a dent here. So I take something like the back of a spoon and you go inside and you just pop it out and then it looks nicer. On the other side it was fine. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and this fantastic box and lid by Dave Brill. Happy folding!